habits stay with you even when you don't have the motivation. Niraj Agrahorti. I hope I didn't butcher that name too bad. But my friends, I harp on this every single day. 10 to 15 minutes. If you will just do that, you can do this. Put your emphasis there. 10 to 15 minutes each and every day following these charts, paying attention to what is going on, and all this will work for you. I'm going to put at the end of today's video all four of those top trainings that we have available for you. I really want you to take them. They are incredible. They will totally change the way that you have traded in the past. Those of you who've had nothing but losses, losses, losses in your practice trades, you're going to love this. The wave technique, the average true range, calls it using that to set your profit and loss bands, the always winning method, the success multiplier formula, and the golden ticket. That's actually five. I'll figure out a way how to stick that wave uh, technique in somewhere else, but um, it'll be in the show notes. The wave technique will be, the rest of them will be at the end of the video. If you're not a subscriber, go to chartingwealth.com, sign up for free. Of course, if you're a Patreon supporter, you get that three-part series, Options Made Simple, the Charting Wealth Way. You want to learn options, you don't have to go out and pay thousands for a course. Just support us at Patreon, and we'll send you a three-part course. Now let's jump into these charts, see what we have going on. We see that the S&P 500 up for the day, 2.39%. I'm excited about that. Why? Well, we're still at a negative 14. That means that the two-day and the weekly are down, but this half day is up. This pull-up means that we'll possibly have, most likely have another opportunity for another easy down trade. Again, SH is the inverse fund you can practice trade, or if you've taken our three-part series, Options Made Simple, the Charting Wealth Way, you can buy puts and do those practice trades. And again, if you're getting good at options, then of course you can do fractional trading. Now they are expensive on the S&P, so when you start fractionally trading, look for lower priced stocks where you can buy a contract or two and you're not spending thousands of dollars. But when you get good at this, again, you'll know it because you'll just see green, 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 and look how beautiful it was last time. So we're excited to see the S&P up 2.39% for the day because it'll give us another opportunity to jump in when it rotates down, most likely. What about the NASDAQ 100? It is up to even more, 3.71%. We had that beautiful 7% winner on the NASDAQ over the course of just a few days. NASDAQ now is at a negative 14, meaning, of course, the only thing up is the half day. Well, again, again it, maybe it goes up for a few days. That's fine. As long as our two-day and our weekly stay down, when it rolls over, we'll be looking to jump back in again, just like we saw this last time where things popped up for a couple of three days and then hammered over going down. That is beautiful, my friends. What about 20-year bonds? Well, we are continuing to watch what's going on there. This last 20-year bond trade, we did not make our 4.52%. Only 1.1, I think it was 1.13, 1.17%. We got out when it went from red to green on the STC. And of course, that was a smart move. Otherwise, we would have had a loser. But starting to rotate over, going down again, we're waiting for the STC to go from green to red. And we'll jump back in. Why? Because the weekly and the two-day are still hard down as far as the... STC goes. Look at that weekly. So again, got four days there of some up movement on the half day, but again, that uh, does not, has not changed the STC. So if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's fine. The charts tell us what to do when they're ready to tell us. Gold, we're still in that down trade, hoping for a profit on this of 6.28%. We're already at about 4%. So that is beautiful. Wait a second, wrong there. That's $6.28. Uh, we're already at about a $4 mark. It's 3.62%. So again, things are heading down on gold. That is nice. Again, negative 15 on everything. Gold down 
0.81% for the day. Bonds were down 1.48%. Lastly, we will go to Bitcoin. What is up with Bitcoin? Man, up some for the day, 5.28%, but that doesn't make up in any way for this huge down move that we have seen. The STC is still negative. We're still at a negative 15, still down on the weekly, still down on the two-day. And again, look at this last week, just hammering down. Again, the bleeding is all over the place. And of course, multiple uh, short-term shorts on this down move. And that is wonderful. That's what we look for. So again, you can practice trade those things. Even though you don't have up moves, you can practice the down moves. So I love this chart. I love XBTF. That is the Vanek Bitcoin strategy. That's a short-term future on Bitcoin. And again, that's what I'm going to buy when Bitcoin finally turns around and the crypto space recovers and starts going up. How low will it go? I don't know. I don't care. I don't own it. I'm not going to own a loser. I'm not going to hang on to something that's trashing out like this. Who would when you can turn around and buy it at any time? Do you see what I'm saying, folks? Liquidity is one of the big keys to what we teach here. If you're holding on to stuff that's losing value, why are you doing that? There's no reason to if you can read a stock chart. That would probably be my biggest bonus to you on Friday at the end of this week is if you can read a stock chart, why would you hold on to a loser? There we are, folks. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.